Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, to our ongoing study in the theology of Karl Barth. We finished our discussion of the church dogmatics. We're now going to take a look at the uh, Cambridge Companion to Karl Barth. We're going to begin by looking at the essay on theology by uh, Christoph Schwobel. It runs from uh, page 17 to 37. It's a short essay, but it discusses the development of Barth's theology. Let's begin by looking at block one. We're going to take a look at uh, the task of theology. Bart says that uh, theology is a task has a task of bringing together of Christianity and empirical reality. But there's a problem with modern theology because uh, it promotes religious individualism and it promotes historical relativism. For Bart, modern Theology has failed because of this uh, twofold emphasis on individualism and relativism. And he says that because of the engagement with cultural consciousness, that uh, modern theology has tried to address issues in the academic realm only instead of the theological realm, and it has compromised its position. So for Bart, modern theology must be negated because it has compromised its position by adapting to cultural consciousness. And then Bart says that if you look at the 1C, authentic engagement with culture would mean encountering with the uh, revolutionary event of Christ's ongoing advent. And so Bart took up, in note two, he took up the breaking away from modern theology. And it got triggered by the crisis of the First World War, when all theology became a questionable enterprise. And that was one big reason why he uh, disconnected with modern theology. He said that theology needed to find a new theological beginning, and there can be no compromise with social structures. The new beginning began with an engagement with the Book of Romans for Bart, and that led to uh, the following three axioms. Number one, there exists a contradiction between God and the secular world. Number two, this qualitative difference creates the human situation of unrest. And third, in Romans 8.22, we find that all of creation and all of humanity cry out in birth pangs for needed reconciliation. So those are the three foundational axioms of striking out, striking out for a new beginning in theology for Bart. But Bart says that if you look at the D4, from the human side of things, God exists as an impossible possibility. But note E, from God's side, the impossible has incarnately entered our history and humanity, making the possible a new theological beginning. The incarnation makes new theological beginning possible in spite of the distance of contradiction between secular reality and God the Incarnation makes a new theological beginning possible. And so that brings us to a conclusive statement in Note 3, where an emerging dialectical theology becomes posited by Bart himself. The answer is dialectical theology. The new beginning has to be a new beginning with dialectical theology. And he says it takes up a triune task. <clears throat> Historical theology makes visible the contradiction between Christianity and secularity. Systematic theology will attest to the question of God in face of contradiction and human limitation. And practical theology, which will never become a synthesis, will negate illusion, 
in modern theology and posit dialectical theology based on the word of Christ. And that will create word event for a reconciled humanity. So theological new beginning for Bart is dialectical theology, which uh, encompasses the historical, the systematic, and the practical. That gives us our first inserted triad. We are confronted by a failure of modern theology. It creates individualism and relativism. It must be negated. So we must enter into a theological break by adapting uh, the theology of Romans and the doctrine of incarnation, which makes God a true possibility in a new theological beginning. And that new theological beginning is dialectical theology. It takes place through the word of Christ that encounters us in promise and possibility of word event. So we have our theoretical moment of negating modern theology, adopting the theology of Romans, the doctrine of incarnation, and affirming dialectical theology. Now, how does this uh, dialectical theology become concrete? Let's take a look at block two. In block two, we're going to take a look at the concrete possibility of theology. Bart says we have a theological predicament. We have an obligation, but also an inability to speak of God. This problem emerges at the borderline of humanity. Theology must reach beyond this boundary of secular scientific possibility. And theological language makes the predicament visible because dogmatic language is abstract in its articles of faith. That must be negated. Critical and mystical language simply confronts humanity with its own negation. It must also be negated. Only dialectical language can be taken up. It's the authentic way of relating dogmatic affirmation and critical negation. Dialectical language is the only authentic concrete possibility. Now, if we take a look at uh, note two, the theological subject matter, the subject matter of Christian theology is not an object like history. It is a subject. It is Christ and his personhood, which is never abstract truth. It is Christ and his personhood, which is the object of theology. And all Christian doctrine must be reflected off the personhood of Christ. Because the apex of contradiction is the cross of Christ for Bart. God himself, he makes himself known through the revelatory event of Christ and through his own act of creating faith within humanity. It's always this act of divine change which creates faith. That's an additional fact that's important for Bart, the fact that our faith is a creation of divine change. We receive that as a passive reception from God's divine change. So the subject matter can never be abstraction. And if you look at the 2C, God makes himself known in the revelatory event of Christ and through that passive reception of faith within humanity. So from a concrete perspective, we must say in the conclusive statement of note three, from a concrete point of view, we must say that dialectical theology is a theology of self-disclosure. Dialectical theology is, from the concrete point of view, it is self-disclosure. We can achieve theological objectivity through God's self-disclosure in Revelation, but it will be articulated within the framework of philosophical language. However, it will never be an articulation in abstractions. Now, if you look at 3D, this is key for Bart. Knowledge of God is constituted as passively in faith that which the Spirit creates within us. And it also cannot be a rational synthesis 
It cannot be Hegel's rational synthesis either. If you look at 3E, dialectical theology can never be expressed as a synthesis between reality and idealism. We can only know by means of the Clasis call of Christ, which encounters us, which implicates us and draws us into the practical realm of phronesis and praxis. Dialectical theology is concrete theology that will move up through phronesis and praxis. That gives us a very powerful second inserted concrete triad. Concretely, dialectical theology is dialectical form. It's the only way to bring together dogmatics and human limitation. The content is Christ as subject and his personhood, not abstract truth. That will create spirit-empowered disclosure as our knowing is reached passively in faith, which is created by God himself. Divine change is the foundation for our theology. Divine act, divine change, is the foundational creation of the possibility for theology. And so that takes us on to the positive statement, the positive moment. We've gone past through the theoretical, we've passed through the concrete. So our affirmative statement of Bart's theology is three. The third moment, theology is scientific. And Bart begins the five axioms of theology. Being comes before knowing. The way something is determines how it is known. Two, actuality and its ontological horizon, horizon comes before possibility. Three, historical theology plays a role in organizing meaning. And we know that because of all of the historical theology present in the dogmatics in the, in the smaller print. Four, the being of God is the ground for our knowledge. And five, the actuality of word determines the possibility of theology. Theology is word event theology. So if you look at uh, note two in block three, we're going to look at the methodology of this theology. The work of theology must reach a correspondence between divine noema design and ecclesiastical ontic being. The being of the church is constituted in the divine act or the divine change. So the being of the church and church membership must also be a free response act out of this encounter with the Clasis call of Christ in personal address. Church identity. Human identity is an identity through Clasis call and word event. It's the encounter with the Clasis call of Christ. That is the defining ontological moment, the moment of encounter and personal address. Therefore, the word of Christ becomes the ontic word event, which is the ground of all theological knowing. Self-understanding of the church and its membership occurs through the revelatory self-disclosure of the Trinity in the Christ event. So he concludes in note three, Axioms of being and actuality and the act of divine change and free response lead to knowing through imminent trinity. It's a theological knowing through the imminent trinity. God's self-revelation is the condition for the possibility of knowing. The self-disclosure of the triune God necessitates the independence of theology and its powerful interdependence in relation to all other academic fields. So this lesson is tremendous by uh, Schwabel in this uh, first essay on theology. We've passed through the theological triad of negating modern theology, taking up a theological break, and then affirming dialectical theology, which becomes concrete as a dialectical form and the content, which is the personhood of Jesus Christ, not abstract truth which becomes empowered self-disclosure of Christ in order that we might have the knowledge for our theology. That leads to theology becoming scientific because of its adhering to the five axioms. Five axioms that a being precedes knowing. Actuality precedes possibility. Historical theology must be taken up 
within our systematic theology. And word creates word event. All of these aspects are firmly emphasized by Bart. I believe that uh, Schwabel has correctly given us a powerful depiction of what theology is for Karl Barth and the dogmatics. And that's going to wrap up this first essay on the Cambridge Companion to Karl Barth. We'll pick up next time with the second essay, uh, which we'll pick up on page 38.